Well, if that didn't get your blood pumping and get you fired up for a day of Quake Champions, I really do not know what will. We're back in the studio, of course, with a very familiar face, someone that all of you will know, I'm sure. Zoot, the basically boon of the community, I'd say. You're a, you're literally a, a wealth of knowledge in a very elegant form, I must say. Very complimentary of you. That's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> and you're very citrusy. That's what I, I also do, you know. Uh, I, I delve into citrusy-based facts and also animal facts. That tends to be my role. Animal facts. Yeah, okay. At well, times. You know, chickens are the only other animals that have REM sleep. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Good. That's a small one for you, just to I'm, start us off. I will be testing you as the day goes on as well, so be prepared. I You're hope absolutely so. Absolutely prepared. I hope so. But no, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be commentating with you, Jackie. I know, it should and be exciting so stuff. We're taking a dive into the, the, the realm of Quake Champions, so I'm looking forward to getting the games going on a little later. We've got lots of great games lined up. And, uh, and yourself, what's been exciting you so far about uh, the Quake Champions and the Quake Pro League? It's cool to finally sort of be involved with Quake as a whole mm-hmm. now coming into it, sort of Quake Champions because it was basically I was, I was sort of a long-time Quake Live player. I was mm-hmm. always into it. A friend of mine was involved with Four Kings, so I kind of, I always knew what was going on in the Quake Live scene and was sort of had it funneled onto me, and it was like, dude, you've got to be involved with Quake. And mm-hmm. It kind of naturally came Amazing. in. I wasted many an hour just sweating Instagib, just living my <laughs> movie, just trying to wreck people with a railgun, and you know, I'm, I might not be the best at it, Zoo, but it was a bloody good time. No, you've always got to be the best at it, though. Not it's yet. fine, you're making loads of friends. You're making loads of friends. You've been hauling ass in Instagib already. Everyone's best mate. <laughs> yeah, it's very, very true. It was uh, it was probably the dream scenario for me, but now I'm here. I'm finally involved with Quake Champions, which yes. it's looking madness. Obviously, you know, off the back of week one, from what I saw there, you and Ketchup absolutely killing it with some ridiculous results that came through. We saw a straight up 3 0 as yes. well, which was just ridiculous. So and I'll be honest, it's I'm, crazy. I'm expecting some more 3 0s today. We've got lots of interesting matchups, but there's going to be some very tough ones and some ones which we can see. I think, especially. I'm giving spoilers away now, and I'm sure we're going to run through the schedule later, but the last game of the day is going to be one of the most interesting games that I'll see this year. Nos versus Rafa, really, really, really hyped for that. Yeah. And also, Kilsen versus Cooler is going to be taking place on the EUCIS side. That's going to be massively exciting. But the one 3 we had last week was with Nosfa, and he had, had it against uh, Saigib. So, yeah. I, I think we should explain the format a little bit, just yeah. to recap a little bit uh, along the lines, because it looks just to people like we've got best of threes. It's actually three straight maps, which is why we're saying the 3-0. It's not best of five or anything like that. You get two points points for a map win so you get four points if you get two maps win and it sounds like you get six points for three maps win, but you actually get a bonus two points so eight whole points if you get all three of those and uh, we're obviously playing through league in order to get ourselves to luca comics and games uh, at the beginning of november so points are very valuable if you want to keep yourself in the pro league or get yourself that absolute top seeding to maximize your chances of success yeah that's why that free uh, well was so big as well when we spoke yes. about it because it's a ridiculous point lead early on especially mm. like week one to pick up a 3-0 it projects you 100%. so much further you get those extra bonus points not only that you've got a major amount of confidence going through mm-hmm. and that's why it's it's looking like those games later on tonight when we actually do get to get into that it's it's going to be a slobber knocker honestly i'm excited for it, it looks like we've got yeah. two big slobber knocker games tonight. no absolutely and i think we've got the eu schedule as well uh coming right up so we can take a look at that i want to also give a quick shout out to uh, the Challenge League, which started yesterday yes. uh, in all the scenes. We had Sirius winning on the side of EU, and we had Dewey winning on the side of the Americas. Uh, so congrats to them getting those early points, but these are the Pro League points right now that we have in the EU CIS region. And you can see Garpy up at the top at the moment, but it's kind of tied all the way. You mm-hmm. see the notable frags, which is why he'll be up at the top, but there's a lot of two ones going on last weekend, which is why there's many tiebreaker scenarios. And Kilsen Cooler, something's going to change about that by the end of the day. Yeah, obviously having their bye week on the first week, they've got a little bit of time to chill, yeah. relax. Now they can come in and actually start to do that level of unreal damage we expect to actually see from them. Moving on, of course, to the Americans. Let's see how they were stacking up. Oh, man, that no there the uh, eight hole points. Now, that is much, much more firmly in the lead. And uh, he, I believe, Effortless has got a bye uh, today. Uh, most of the others are playing. I'll have to, I think Dramus as well has got uh, a bye. Uh, but Nosfa going versus Rafa, that is going... I can't... I won't be able to stop thinking about that game. Uh, I've obviously Rafa. Yeah. We all know about him. This guy's the GOAT. Um, definite advantage, but there's some special energy that Nosfa has and that I think the community is also driving towards him that some people might be expecting some upsets. It's exciting because that's kind of like a David and Goliath matchup. Yes. And it's so early on into the league, so it, it poses a really important mm-hmm. question of 
is the hype to be believed, or is it going to be a, a curious one? Exactly. Um, and Nosfa is actually playing from America at the moment, so uh, pings are going to be even for those that care about that. But these are our world rankings. So we've actually got everything uh, accumulated uh, from QuakeCon, it appears. And uh, you can see where points stand at the moment, from uh, Rafa down to Brick. And Rafa has actually found himself right at the top. We've had a little chop and change with the kill cycle, but again, they haven't played in the online segment yet, so things Kilson could very well find himself right at the top again by the end of today. Yeah, it's going to be that difference, right, of obviously their previous results they picked up from mm -hmm. QuakeCon on land, where we know some of these players are at their absolute best, and where other people potentially struggle, now going into online, where it's kind of a different kettle of fish. Yes. Yeah, it absolutely is. There's some that maybe play better online, some that don't perform as well, but either way, when you've got something as meaningful as the Quake Pro League games, you've got to step up anyway. We've got a schedule now to look at, something that you can expect to be seeing today. This is our EU CIS side. Spartiavec is going to be our first game, and uh, these are the ones to follow with that Kilson Cooler at the end of the EU CIS segment. I'm actually looking at base Toxic as a really, really close match. And as our, our experts have been predicting, they also seem to be thinking the same thing. Yeah, across the board, though, it's actually fairly one-sided, looking as if potentially yeah. they're believing that we might actually see some more straight free O's today. Yeah, and I wonder if the experts are siding with, hmm, Sparty got 31-1 on Molten yeah. versus Garpy last time. Maybe we won't be in so much favor, especially when you look at the Molten Force as their last map. Seven frag advantage for Avic with Slash. Absolutely possible at the moment. But Sparty is also someone who can just turn up the heat when you don't expect mm. it at all. Um, it's really on him today to say that last week was just a... A fluke, hard, right? It doesn't matter. It, like, yeah. it's, I'm back to my regular shape and I'm back to kicking ass. Well, hopefully so, because that was when I spoke to you, obviously, mm. off camera when I was talking about it. And I was like, dude, what happened to Sparty there? Because yeah. he's a player that, for me, normally when he came in, he had ridiculous aim. He was quite a high sense gamer that just absolutely went out there and wrecked face at times. Mm -hmm. And it didn't look like him. No, uh, he had a couple of okay maps. He he managed to win one of them anyway, which is fine. But then we saw the one map on Molten where I wasn't really sure what was in his head whatsoever. So I don't know if he can compose himself. Then he's he's someone who can challenge any player in the world. We've got our BTs here, though. This is setting up for our first game of the day. Yeah, talking of being composed, you're going to want to compose yourself for this one because mm. it should be a very tasty affair, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, in terms of... I mean, we can run into the predictions in a little bit. I mm -hmm. think we'll be able to get our map picks and bands and champions and so on and so forth in a short while. Uh, my little uh, cheat book tells me that we're actually going to Awoken first, by the way. And uh, Sparty didn't get 31-1 there, so it's going to be closer. It's going to be closer than 31-1. Yeah, I think so. There's the man. Oh, we get to see a little bit of what was going on. He had these weird drops that he did at the beginning of the series, which I really didn't understand. Uh, he just got very excited. And, you know, one of the, one of the fundamental rules is you do not drop onto someone who has the lightning gun. Yes. It doesn't really matter your stack. Unless, unless you know that they're on about 20 health, you just shouldn't make that risk against players at the level that they are in in Quake Pro League because they can just punish you so much. And even if you do get a kill doing that, you probably take 100, 200 damage, and you get pushed off that control, so they respawn, yeah. and all of a sudden you're you're suffering, not necessarily. Especially when that man's Garpy as well, because yes. like some of the traces we saw yesterday, it was pretty picture perfect. Like mm. There wasn't actually that much downtime where he wasn't completely on his target. He was looking drilled yesterday going into those opening games. Yeah, and Garpy's got Venga today, his um, maestro brother, um, it's going to be a hard game for him, and I think Garpy's someone that looked at as someone, okay, he's got a lot to, to prove mm -hmm. in the Quake Pro League, but uh, again, when his shape is on form, then he surprised loads of people at LAN. You know, he's taken victory, he yeah. LAN victories already, uh, and he's got amazing performances, beating Tox on LAN, for instance. Uh, he doesn't have Tox today, though, so don't worry about that one just yet. But uh, Wenger is also a young player, very, mm -hmm. very hungry. And again, Garpy's one of the more senior player in his 30s. Uh, not like a Wenger Tox that we had last week, which was literally the youngest and the oldest versus each other. But uh, Garpy's not a million miles. Sorry, Garpy, I don't want to <laughs> sound, sound that way. Just, just trying to state facts here a little bit. Well, you know, he's a silver fox. Yes. He might be old, but he's elegant. Yes. That's, and, that's how it indeed. works. Indeed, and almost uh, completely unintelligible. I mean, it's really hard to understand him. <laughs> speaking <laughs> speaking Garpish is uh, is what people will say his tongue is. But no, he's, he's a brilliant guy. And um, I'm excited to see what he's got later. But let's talk a little bit about what we've got to come back next with Avic and Sparty. Mm -hmm. um, Avic ended up losing versus base 
last week. It was 2-1. There was the one map I think will linger in people's minds, which was the Blood Run, where mm-hmm. there was no way for Avic to come back. And I think we were talking about it before. When you're picking a low mobility character into a clutch, you're just not going to have the success that you want whatsoever. Uh, it's an easy way to run away. So I think the one thing for Avic to, now to consider is just be very aware of those possible champion matchups and ensure he doesn't have that immediate disadvantage before the game starts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if, we, if he can at least go back into it with the level of confidence we saw with last mm. week, then there very well might be a chance for him to just come here and do an absolute amount of damage. We saw that where it didn't look like at any point he wanted to put on the brakes. And I feel like that's something that he actually does really excel at. You know, he's called the Prince. You yeah. can't stop him. Yeah, indeed. And he's got a very, very aggressive style. When he when he has that confidence, you can mm. see it, the way the form of expression on the screen, it's absolutely magical. But um, if I do you want to go to prediction? We do a little... Do we delve into it? Should we put our toes into uh, the prediction puddle? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm... I kind of want to side with the experts at the moment. Mm-hmm. It does sound 3-0-ish uh, to me, but that's... I'm only saying that if Sparty's shape is the same as it was last week. Okay. And you do have sometimes those Everyone has good days, everyone has bad days. And hopefully for Sparty, that was just a bad day. And now it's not anymore. <laughs> and he can get back. So maybe 3-0 to 2-1, but leaning more into 3-0 of Alex's side. Really? See, I, I think this is potentially one of those that could actually be a little bit closer and go around the region of a 2-1 split. Either between either side, really, for me. Because right. I, I feel like Sparty is... Maybe it's just I'm holding on to like old memories, <laughs> but it, it's kind of there for me. I feel like there'll be some absolute Swedish superstars. You're definitely, you're definitely supporting Sparty. I I mean, I, it, it might not be the, a yeah. bad thing to do at all, though. I feel like there's a chance. Because uh, Avec, um Havoc is an absolute beast at LAN. I think he... There's a total different mentality when it comes to this play. So if if he can get to that shape and demonstrate that kind of fearlessness mm. that he has at LAN, then I think it should be okay for him. But there, there's definitely a margin where Sparty can take advantage. And, I, and we do have the picks and bans ready now, I believe, so we can take a quick look at them and see what we've got coming up for us. Excited to see a slash right at the end. That's something I'll be keeping a note of later on. Always exciting to see old Quake 4 legends playing on that champion. But early on, we've got Awoken, we've got Doom and Galena, and the bans out as well. Sorlag and Anarchy. Sparty played both of those champions last week. Yeah. He's even banning one of them, one of them out himself. Like he had success with Sorlac, but not with Anarchy. And uh, we're getting a lot of VQ3 up until basically the Slash comes in. For me, it, it's really just going to be sort of the difference. Of, I feel like this is pretty level-headed in terms of the matchup. Overall, the bans, obviously, it kind of does explain a lot, right? So like we saw a lot of that where effectively there was a couple of times where he was getting like trade kills hmm. just off the back of the damage over time, where he was very nicely using that ability. Like it was yeah. perfect execution. So obviously getting rid of that straight up, it makes sense. It's a fair enough decision to base it off. But I feel like if he's had his Fika, if he comes in, you know, he's straight off the back of that coffee break, he's fired up, there'll be some <laughs> damage, honestly, Zoo. Yeah, and then we've got... Uh, ooh, I'm looking at the ban at the end. I'm not sure about that, but um, the DK, DK is tricky. I really... I feel like there's a very, very... It's going to be a hard game, the last one. Yeah. Because the DK is actually regarded at the moment as one of the sort of lower tier champions in the pool. Even though we've seen some players making great use of them, on the likes of uh, Vale of Nath. Raph is very good with them there. But um, with the Slash... Avec, I think the pressure's really on him to not lose that because the matchup favors him a lot in that particular one. But otherwise, in terms of champion matchups, the others are fairly even. It's going to be down to the raw skill. Yeah, that's probably kind of what we want, though, really, isn't it? When it gets mm-hmm. into it, you know, if you can actually have that full sort of mono a mono matchup with everyone basically not really restricted and held back, just going in based off raw skill, that's yeah. going to provide us with some pretty exciting stuff, which is fun. No, exactly. And uh, really, I'm looking forward to the guys uh, getting themselves into the game, getting themselves hopefully up on the leaderboards. Because mm. it's not, you're getting to, we've had week one, and we've had a couple of people on a break. Now you're kind of getting to the point where, well, if anything messed up last week, I really don't want any more bad weeks. Yeah. Because all of a sudden, it's going to be week eight, and you're going to be thinking, crap, how do I get myself to the top now? The big time where you had to make up those points. It's like we saw at the beginning of Quake on Razy Loss versus Nosfer on day one. And in the end, that was the one thing that stopped him from basically being in the championship match. You 
the day one or week one and two, it's super, super important. It's got to go right for these guys. Yeah. I mean, you, you can't really do kind of have one chance, right? Mm-hmm. It's it's the fact, effectively, sure, if you have mistakes and week one doesn't really go your way, especially kind of with three O's being picked up, that is way worse. But if it's a 2-1 split and you can kind of build off the back of it, you have more time to go with. But it's, yeah. it's limited and you need those points early, especially because of obviously everyone having the additional lead off the back of QuakeCon. That's where you're going to start to sweat a little bit and realize, yeah. all right, you know, this is squeaky bum time. We need to pull ourselves. Yeah. Up. Oh, you say it as well. That's yeah, good. That's good. Yeah, yeah there you uh, go. I, I, people people meme it sometimes, but yeah. I I respect that. Jizuti, we're a good doer. <laughs> it works. I've got to grow on that a little bit, but I, I like it. Yeah. We're making foundations here, guys. Yeah. Foundations in the well, Quake if, Champions. If, if you have a name for us both, answers on a postcard. <laughs> Send it in. I do get worried at the suggestions sometimes, but I'll welcome them open open handedly. Good. Hang on, let me just open Twitch chat now. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that one a little bit later. Um, but yeah, we're talking about the points again. Getting that zero, mm-hmm. especially when you look at the global leaderboards, I think that's where it gets a bit scary when you start getting the the nil point. Yeah. Uh, especially when Nosa's like living loving life right now. He's got eight points. He's sailing to the top. Uh, those people who've got zero, uh, you don't want to see that week on no. week on. And if Sparty gets zero today, I mean, I think he was almost fortunate to get the the two that he did last week because he played a risky champion on the map that he won. It was Ruins, uh, Sorlag versus Garpy. I was mm-hmm. like, is he really playing this? Sorlag's a great champion, but I feel like Sparty's strengths really lie in the sort of mid-champion, um, normal VQ3 mobility, just pure yeah. strafing. To me, that's where Sparty is really a gem at. And if he can just use that and do what he can do with it, then he's way more likely to get success and see himself get well, the points. That was kind of the, the point you were touching on earlier as well, where it was very sort of overly aggressive play, where mm. it's, it's kind of hard to actually decide if that is the right call to make. But I tell you what is the right call to make, to yes. take this one off. Let's get underway with the first matchup here for week two of the Quake Pro League. It should be a very juicy affair indeed, as already a Tasty Rail has been fired out. Yeah, not too shabby. Avec is uh, lacking on stack, but he actually leaves the Mega up for a long time. So we've got high mobility now versus the totem wielder that is Galena, and people probably get sick of me talking about it, but I'll never stop talking about it. Kill the totems. Always kill the totems. Even if you're not playing versus Galena, just look out for totems. It's, it's, it's the right way to succeed. That's honestly a life rule to just live by yes. in general. Make sure you just take out the totems. You never want them knocking about. You know, they get under your feet, they'll have banana peels. It's not ideal. <laughs> Sparty, that's a near miss with a rail actually trying to get the early opener there. This time does tick through. Grabs the armor, looking to re-aggress suit. He's going to charge through with the LG. Couple of tags coming out as he does start to give us a bit of a light show. Yeah, he didn't quite get the punish on Avec. There was a little bit of a scare for him because Avec moved out trying to punish Sparty on the heavy. And he had the rail out. You, you can get punished really hard for that. He managed to escape, get a lead trap up, got onto the mega health. And uh, his stack is now, even though he's got his 100 armor, he's going against a triple totem Galena. He, he killed the totems, Jackie. Yeah. They need to he's, kill the He's got to kill those totems. It's not appropriate. You can't just be leaving them up. <laughs> At this point, it's going to get rough. A very lovely row coming through as well. Oh. This is where the aggression starts to pick up, and that's where the first frag is found. Team Sweden coming in big. That was that was gorgeous, actually, for Sparty. Three really nice rails. When his rail game is on, he is so scary. And he's got to watch out for the rockets from above. Doesn't take too much damage, and he's still got totems. He's got another one that he can lay down. So his defenses at the moment are unbelievably good. And now, now to say it more seriously, Avec does need to slow the game down a little bit soon and just ensure that he's getting rid of some of the assets that Sparty's using. Yeah, he's been thrown into such an awkward position as well. It's just the fact that Sparty basically has full control at this point. It's always going to be there to protect him as he tries to get the angle off. The early LG going to come through, get an initial attack response with the rocket. Misses on the rail, very low, should be going down, but it's an awkward firefight between them both. The LG will overthrow him as he gets sent sleeping with the fishes. Yeah, unfortunately for Sparty, he missed a lot of his early shots and it, he wasn't able to slow Avec down as he was chasing into the lightning gun room. Uh, Sparty eventually loses one, but he's had really good positioning on his totems. Fight oh. over Mega Health, and it's going to favor Sparty ultimately, so he will take back the lead. That's not a bad response either. Instantly cutting down. Trying to show that he can be a bit of a madman when it comes to wooden. The lightning gun instantly back on. Precision as hell. Spams out with the rockets as well, oh. getting the tags across, but realizes it's time to back off as both of them get incredibly low on the stack after that fight. Yeah, I think Avec 
doesn't feel too unhappy that he went through the teleport. Even though one more punch would have actually killed him, they're going to meet through the tele. Avic takes 100 damage. He's right behind wow. again. Totem, though, I think that might have just saved his life. In fact, Avic tremendously weak, but Sparty is ready on this next big major resource. This is what I wanted to see as well. Sparty on the rail. That's where he lives his absolute movie and starts to try and put his name up in lights. Although we'll take this time to try and reset himself a little bit of a gap in the window as he goes through the shot through. No glory today though as it won't actually connect. Uh, machine gun positioning has been really good actually. Avix has not been going into the HMG room. Say room, the HMG closet, corridor. The Harry Potter Cabin. cupboard. Yeah, pretty much. And so I think if Sparty can keep playing a slow game and working with the resources he's been building himself, th this would be great. It it's so much nicer seeing him play like this than when he's on the Anarchy or the Sword mm -hmm. I think this just fits his style so much more, but Avex just got rid of them. And that's actually really painful for Sparty. He's just got to be strong Ooh. from the damage of a distance. Yikes, that's close, but it's a near miss, and he's not going to want to straight jump back into it. Repositions, though, primed them ready. He's able to get the totem off, and the instant connection with the rail. Nice rocket comes through. The follow-up will tag him, but he does need to back off. Zoot, this is getting far too close for comfort. 31 to work with, misses the rocket. That's the armor going to be grabbed. Oh, come on! How is he still alive? <laughs> Eventually, Smarty will fall. I really think that Sparty could have done a better job if he had the lightning gun out. It looked like he was going to go down anyway, but Avec getting that kill, he's still got some confidence. Taking some HMG damage and a little self rockets, weapons massively favor him, so he should just get the heavy and get out of there. He's been able to ward him off. Straight back in with a fabled weapon. I want to see some of those ridiculous rails coming through. That's what I live for. The cheeky Sparty rails. Does have the totem up. Going to try and at least get himself a little bit of a distance out of here before he re-aggresses. He does get a little extra damage. It's very, very even at the moment. I think we could get fireworks over at the heavy. Unless one of them chooses to go passively in order to set up for mega health. And if someone's going to go passive now, it's probably going to be Sparty. Damage from a distance. Got position now on it, but he doesn't Ooh. get the ledge grab. Takes a fair amount of damage, but Mega's still there, ready and waiting for him. He hasn't picked it up. He can maximize his stack and opportunity. If he takes a bit of damage, he can just go back and accumulate it. So not a mistake to not pick it up. Just uh, play, maximizing the use of the resources he already has. And that's a smart play you want to see coming through at this level of work as well. You don't need to make that instant snap second decision, but you do need to be snapping your response where you're aiming as the battle kicks off once more. The war not going in the favor of Sparky at this point. He does get the totem down, and the lightning gun is the difference maker as he sets him up on a date with a coroner. Instant response with a rail as well. He is not slowing down right now. Free to two, Zoo. Yeah, very good. He's stabilizing the control a bit. He'll be a little late onto the Mega Health, but he should be able to do some good damage here. As you can see, Avex got very limited weaponry, so that Mega Health doesn't do anything for him. And he was railable yeah. up on the top ledge and Ooh. right off the spawn. He is struggling at the moment. LG should be enough, but Avex finds the rockets. That's nasty. The, through the teleporter, on the brink of overly aggressive there. You could see the confidence just pumping through his veins, though. It was one of those where it's like, right, no, I'm not slowing down. I'm just going to keep going for it. And again, he carries on with that mantra. Pain is what he wants to deliver here. And he hopes Avic likes it. Gets him down incredibly low, but misses the rocket. That'll be the difference maker. Although, when he leaps into him, the leap of faith is not going to work out. I think he, he had Berserk on, so it was just so difficult for him to control himself afterwards. And obviously, if you're far away, Someone with any kind of range is going to get the better of you. Six for three, and uh, Sparty is playing that good game. Going against my initial expectations, he's looking down the barrel of a possible victory on Awoken, but the job is not done yet. Sparty trying to do his best Spartan impression right now as he wants to kick Avic straight out of the server. That's another one picked up as he's putting himself in a fairly dominant lead right now as we hit that seven minute mark, Zoot. This is looking pretty darn effective. That's a really good judge of uh, the fight. Even though he had 11 health, he pushed back out based on the weapon that Avic had uh, and the knowledge that it was going to be difficult for him to retaliate straight away. So a super sick clutch play from Sparty and he's still Dealing some damage. However, Avic now trying to exchange a little, but rocket to rail, to LG, to grave. This is beautiful stuff. Seven minutes 30 now achieved. A huge lead, and he is showing no signs of slowing down. Sparty. Raising Hell, like Smoking Joe Fraser, the Hellraiser, Raising Hell with a flavor as he wants to get off another rocket, deals some damage, slows down the fight, grabs it, luckily just in time to get the extra 50 armor to play with, but it's not looking fantastic. They're going to have to carry on with this fight, as Savink bails out and tries to at least get a bit more stack. 
Smarty can afford now to play a slower game. He doesn't need to move into every single fight. He does need to do damage here and there just to ensure the full control doesn't come out. But you know what? Avex desperate. He wants to get into a fight, and Sparty is hitting everything. See, this is the complete role reversal as well as what we saw versus Garpy, where Sparty had to overly aggress at every fight. Ooh. Now it has to happen to him, although he won't be able to withstand that one around right between the eyes. That was actually very disgusting from Avex. I can't believe he got that kill over from the power-up spawn. He's managed to get himself heavy. There's Mega coming up soon. We do have overstack totems, and Avex got a bit of a wrong weapon out. He's trying Ooh. to go in with the punches. <laughs> he can't make it happen, and that's double digits for the Swede. Oh, this is just fantastic. I told you he had his Fika today. He's fired up. I, uh, maybe it's just your presence here, man. You've been you've been supporting the Swede, and... I know, straight, straight off there. the back from Stockholm today. I've come in, I've represented, <laughs> and it's going well for him. Oh, there, there's just no slowing down here. You know what? I thought it was Sparty's rails that were going to be impressing me, but it's not. It's the flip side that's doing the damage. As Avic is Ooh, really starting God. to get aggressive. There's a minute left on the clock, though. He's not got too much time, but he still wants to give it his all. Oh, if that actually paid off for him, then there was definitely still a chance. There's still hope at Ooh. the moment, but he doesn't have the lightning gun. He's forcing himself to have to hit every single rail. Oh. And really, just the weapons available to him is what's making this scenario so difficult. This should be a... Fingers crossed, no, you know, drama for Sparty. This should be him kind of coasting towards the map one victory. Yeah. Should be. I think no more shenanigans here. This will probably end Ooh. in a 12-6 unless somehow there's a miraculous play that comes through, but it can't be the win. It's got to be Sparty taking this one home. They are going to drop the GGs. Both of them playing actually fairly formidable there for a first match to open us up on week two. Both of them look they were playing very, very good here. Like, going straight into it, some of the railgun shots were just absolutely formidable. Like, it, yeah. it was wild to see some of those shots, Zoo. I don't think Avic was expecting Sparty to play as well as he did. We saw a lot of intelligent play. I think Elena also really suits oh, Sparty's yeah. play style. And uh, he was just incredibly just conscious of all the aggressive possibilities. And the fact that he had about three minutes early on having triple totems mm -hmm. that weren't found, Avic eventually did. But so much damage had been done at that Point. Look at the uh, the HP healed. We got almost 2.4k for Sparty, 1.2k for Avec. The damage is within 500 of each other, but it's really the amount of extra resources Sparty got from those totems. Yeah, it's the effective placement of the totems as well. Yes. Very, very smart stuff. You know, we, we see some players that actually do sort of panic in some of those scenarios mm -hmm. with totems. They do it a little bit sloppily. I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> He's a sloppy totem boy. Yeah, I am, really. But uh, Sparty was getting the measurement just right between having them strategically placed so that it wouldn't be found immediately so he could heal yeah and also having those totems occasionally for this combat he saved himself in a couple of instances mm -hmm. by being able to block a rail with them so um yeah exceptionally well done from sparty i'm surprised already and honestly if he can keep bringing this level then i i can see him winning the series unless avik is someone who can really step up Honestly, that's kind of what I was vibing off the back of this. I thought if we saw sort of a bit more like old school Sparty, especially the change in playstyle, right? Versus Garpy, mm -hmm. that's kind of been our, our topic of debate the whole time is the fact it was so aggressive. He was the one that had to chase for every fight, consistently yeah. dropping down, basically trying to be Batman in every scenario that he had, and it just didn't work out for him. This time around, our Cape Crusader in Sparty was able to play very defensive, very slow, and essentially bait Avic to have to take the fight towards him so many times, yeah. and it just complemented everything about him. It, it was a whole contrast, and if he can carry on with that, I, I think it could be beautiful. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to linger too much on the negatives, although I do sometimes. Uh, there were occasions where Avic was making those aggressive plays, but mm -hmm. he hadn't done the entry damage in necessarily, so it felt like he wow. was walking further and further into losing battles. Yeah. Um, so maybe if Avic can hit the extra 10, 20% rail so he can open up fights, you know, sometimes that's mm. enough to make the difference. I think his other weapons were on enough, but rail is such an important weapon to be strong out at this level of play. I, see, that's the other thing as well, though. I wonder if there would have been a major difference if actually it would have been a difference matchup in terms of champions, because mm. obviously he was hitting some really sick shots. It's just the fact that he had those totems up. I'd say probably a good sort of 55% of that matchup, they were up. Like, he had yeah. full free totems for a good fair amount. Yeah, and if you're Avec, maybe that throws you off the amount of health and armor that yeah. the player has and it's again incredibly important to know exactly the stack that they have then you can choose what weapon's going to be most effective mm -hmm. if you've got 100 health or more you want to go lg then quickly into a switch because you can quickly clean it up i think it's Hron who's basically famously said quake champions is very much about getting those combination kills you want to be using all of the weapons as fluently as possible in order to 
get the effects that you want, which is fragging, of course. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Quake Champions and essentially like Quake as a whole has been one of those games where you are given an engineer's toolkit mm -hmm. and you have to choose the right tool for the job. You yes. really need to understand at what point your opponent's at. It's it's so heavily influenced in terms of actually being able to understand timings and also when to switch, when to use what is most complementary and the mm -hmm. most useful tool in that scenario. And yeah, exactly. That's why it's so exciting to watch when you see players really hit those ridiculous shots that come through because you're like, damn, this is so calculated. Yeah, no, completely. Uh, we have got Ruins coming up next. Uh, we have got... Let me have a, a quick look. Uh, we've got Ranger versus Visor, I want to say. I believe Sparty's with the Ranger. Mm -hmm. um, this is another interesting matchup, but uh, mobility is going to be maybe a problem for um, Avic, but he's going to have a lot of information to work with, obviously with Piercing yeah. Sight. Um, he's just got to have to respect the Ranger's burst damage capabilities. I think that's mostly going to be it. And that means you really need to get the initial damage in first. More so than the last map, he has to get those opening rails. Otherwise, I think he's going to be faltering. Yeah. I, I feel like he can do it because obviously mm. the shots he were hitting were, were pretty darn ridiculous in terms of things, right? It was very smooth movement. It was fluid as hell. Like yeah. You could see the prediction was there. It was just on the downside of the fact he just physically couldn't keep up with the stack that he had. Yeah. With that switch now, it kind of complements him more to be able to get those sort of establishing shots and actually come in big. But for me, the early game there kind of decided everything. So yeah. if it's a repeat of that, it's it's worrying, really. Yeah, indeed. I, I think I'm going to have to let you do predictions first this time because I followed Ketchup last time <laughs> and he was right every single time. So I think I just have to not I've got the power own. of citrus on my side. Seriously. So, you know, <laughs> it, it helps out. Have you got other citrus base or are you more sort of into berries sometimes? Um, this, this, uh... I, I don't mind lemons as well. They're, they're not too bad. Okay. But something that doesn't leave a sour taste in my mouth is some absolute quake actions. Let's get back in as map two is going to be kicking off now, Zoo. All right, so we are with Avic off the beginning. He's got the visor, he's got a rail, and he is going to be able to open up with the damage initially. Not too dissimilar to what we saw in Awoken, but can he build on this? He's waiting for the sound cues. Has Sparty stepped away? Sparty's far enough away, he's going to be a little confused. But on the other hand, we know that you hear anything triggering like a bounce pad, that's enough to know the timing. Lightning gun fight straight away. Sparty Ooh. misses his jump a little. And that is going to give Avic a nicer high ground advantage for the time being. As he tries to just smell out where Sparty's heading towards. That really has thrown a spanner in the works. Luckily, though, have it quickly responding off the back of that to get himself into a better position with the stack. It's going to come through so he can try and scope it out. Spots him through. Nice tag with a rail there to get the early opener. Response again as he's trying to get the flick across, but he can't quite trace him. Yeah, he's just a little off the mark of the rails. Good opener with the assistance of Piercing Sight. But needs to follow up. And Sparty is retaliating. However, Sparty's on sub-50 points of health. Avec really wants to finish the job soon, but he's got low lightning gun ammunition, so it's a little risky going into the close range cover, but he'll find him just moving on to the platform. Mega's just been taken again. Still no rockets, but he's going to find him off the spawn. Sparty has got the orb, so he can burst damage. Looks like he's going to just try and straight up escape. No way he's actually fighting for this. Oh, he wow. gets picked off anyway. A good effort from Sparty, but I think he bit off more than he could chew. Yeah, that was very nicely played, though, coming through. You can see the calculations in his mind. This man is like a decoding machine, constantly crunching those numbers. Straight back in, though, there is no downtime as he wants to get the shots through. More rails, more pain coming across. Avic looking definitely like a strong contender going into it with the early two frags. That's a frag a minute right now. Yeah, he's been... Oh, well, we're going to get another fight over here. He's going to chase him right through a teleporter. <laughs> LG to rail. That is a truckload of damage. I think the light armor might be up, but Sparty oh, no, has gone, and uh, the health has obviously gone after that. There's the pissing sight. Hourglass just to give him a hand. And this should finish the job there. Not too much drama at all. I was going to say that avic has been pretty loose on the items and focusing far more about doing damage to Sparty. Um, he has to make sure that he knows he's taking the risk and that he could still be giving up some resources to his opponent. But I, I really like the fact that he's just thinking only about his opponent and items at the moment are the second part of the game. Yeah, it, I mean, it's very calculated in terms of the early game here to actually give himself more of a major advantage rather than worrying, right? It's kind of playing your own game mm -hmm. and not focusing around your opponent, which is in some ways a very confident style to actually bring out. And Quake is confidence. Yeah, and uh, I think by playing the way he is, he's making himself harder to read as well. So Mega's going to go to Sparty. That's nothing particularly new at this point. And Sparty's going to drop straight down. He had the tribal out in the midst of all of that fight, and Sparty just picks up essentially a free kill. 
Really good timing on that, and uh, Avec probably going to feel a little silly. However, he has an advantage, and uh, he needn't worry yet. He just needs to get himself on the weapons. That's the, that's the main bit at the moment. It's not about chasing a heavy armor or a mega health. It's about getting to rail and either rockets or lightning gun. The stalemate here. We're both from play around the clock. Wanted to try and get the better items for the stack before they go back in. But here's the reaggression as the battle continues, waging on. A bit of a struggle with the early contact. The flick over to the rocket. And we are going to see things get a little bit better as it goes two to three now. As it's turning into actually quite a close affair here. So now this turns into possibly some strengths for Sparty. He wants to potentially chase for that kill. He misses the openness. So there's not much point at the moment. But Sparty's now very good with the timing. There's an offset of the two major items. It's now exactly 15 seconds. And this is something that even though Sparty didn't take the Mega Health, it can favor him because he's so good at cycling those items. And they're both playing like opposite strategies. Yeah, it's a complete contrast, but it kicks off once again. Dove straight in as he wants to try and do his best for oh. impression, but it's not going to work through. Avok, more like Elton John, call him a rocket man. <laughs> Love it. Very aggressive from Sparty. I don't think the attack was bad. It was just about execution at the end of it. And uh, Avek held on just a little stronger. And Mega Health goes to Sparty. And I was like, okay, if I can get myself into position for items off the spawn, then I can still be chasing down the lead that you have. Sparty really doesn't feel that behind at all, especially now that he's got two major items to work with. And he's also so much more aware in the game than he was last week. He's yeah. been very careful going through these choke points. Well, that's a very creative that jump from so Sparty. Crisp. He uses the uh, orb to get himself a little closer, manages to focus on the item, wow. and the rail after that rail was disgusting from Sparty. All of that looks like it favors Avic, but Sparty's just like, I want the items. As long as I can chip away at you, I have so many resources. He just spots the gauntlet out. Heavy does go over to Avic, but it's still going to be another kill, and Jackie is tied up. This is absolute madness compared to our opening game. This is the real meat and potatoes, what we wanted to see to. Four to four, coming up to the five minutes 30 mark, straight back in as the rockets are going to be landed, trying to blow oh. his toes clean off, but it will be the rail gun that does the real damage, ripping him a new one as he hits him with that rhino. He's got low lightning gun ammunition, but, you know, he's absolutely rocking with everything else, and he just pulls away from that angle as Avec moves down there. Still gets a small punish, but that's a... Uh, that orb is totally off, and it's time to really get away. Enjoy the lead while you've got it, and now work towards the next rotation of control. As he's sitting on his high throne, let's see if he can try and rule over him with a high skill threshold here. The rocket's going to be coming out, a near miss on the rail, but he does ward him off. The quick reposition is nice. They're fast on the draw, but the lightning gun is going to be a very tight affair. Both of them tagging each other up, but they've got to bail out Zoot. They're not confident to continue at this point. They need to try and get the stack back. Good positioning from Sparty, just keeping himself close uh, away. Knows that the lightning gun to rail combo is coming in. Avec moves back towards it. Fortunately for him, doesn't take any extra damage. And the ability of Sparty used in order to secure that control. Bouncing his way around. The movement definitely playing an aid for him right now as he's able to get into a crisp position. Looked like almost there was going to be a rail across there. Ooh. A sliver of damage transferred through as the tag will connect, but so will the rail. And this is where things are going to get fierce. The predictive lightning gun on the way down, a near miss once again. It's literally fractions off. Yeah, so that's going to be a, a big item going up to Avic. Sparty's not far behind. He's been keeping uh, some good control on the lesser items around the map. Somehow hits these rails two in a row. Not quite the third. Now he's weak, but he's got the 25 health bubble. Still rails uh, to work with. And a little set up orb so they can get onto the light armor. Now he's not feeling too unhappy about life. And now trying to find. He's got two rails left, but he Ooh. can't quite hit it. If he lands that, he preserves the, rail, the, the mega health for himself. Oh, you can see these shots as well. He's literally been given so many opportunities into this. Sparty right now, just being restricted by what he has to play with in his arsenal. Only one round left remaining. No rockets either. The lightning gun still being the only thing that really gives him a protective play to work with. Tries to slow it down a little bit. Getting the rail out to see if he can get one from a distance as Avic comes bunny hopping across. Ferrari making his way along. I, I do like, even though Sparty had low ammunition, I, I like his positioning on the map because he needs to know where Avex going before he can make a decision about where he should go. Otherwise, he could end up walking into a trap. So, slow, careful play from Sparty. But it is Avex that's chasing, and Vice is really not bad for chasing. You've got that vision that you can work with. If you choose the right moment for piercing sight, you can open up doors for yourself, but still have to make sure that... Uh, 
you consider the possibilities of the dire or big for damage or for just getting the hell away from you. Let's see if they're going to get themselves into a bit of a kerfuffle here. The rocket comes firing past, so finally Sparty has an idea of what is about to go down here. They're so close by, and the drop comes round on the sideline. It's a quick flick, but it won't connect, and Sparty is straight out of there. Avex got the heavy up uh, for him down below. Is he committing too hard? I think Sparty knows that the heavy's up, so he's going to see him. Avex doesn't overcommit to it, so he can get away, and now Sparty has used his ability. There's a window of opportunity now for Avec to make that comeback. Big stack advantage. As long as he can hunt Sparty down, he's only got his weapons to, to save him. And bear in mind, this is going into the final minute here as well, as we're going to hit that nine minute mark. We really need to see that aggression come out now. It is do or die territory. Avec as well, putting himself into a tremendous position. He's going to be able to pick that up and really thrust himself forward. The rocket's coming around. A game of ring around the rosies, but no one is going to be falling down right now, Zoo. It's all a game of cat and mouse to run down that clock. He's got to chase him down very soon. Oh my god, 50 seconds to go. Not bad damage. Sparty intelligently ran away from the heavy. He thought Possibly he could have taken it down in the last fraction of a second against the piercing side rail. Sparty's in oh, such feet. a difficult position now. He nearly made his shoe purchases a lot cheaper there with only one foot. We've got 30 seconds on the clock. The fast adjustment. It's now or never, Zoo. It has to be coming up in the next 30 seconds. He's right behind him, but the chase isn't working well. Flicks his way up, looking around, panic. No idea where he is at this point, and he's just being danced around. There's still no ability up for Sparty. He has no ability for the rest of the game if you can't find any hourglasses. And I think Avex realized he has to play it slow, but Sparty's taken some initiative. He's gone over towards the health bubbles. Lightning gun on him. There's so little health left. Avex is going to tie it up with just under 10 seconds to go. And what's more important, Jackie, is he's still got the control as well. This is crazy. This is not what I expected to see, but the instant connection coming through. He's going to try and knock him down. This could be a whole role reversal as we head into the overtime now. The battle, the bloodlust from either side as the rockets are soaring through the sky, trying to blow the other one out of the window. And it is just the one frag that is going to determine the victor here. Neither players are that strong, but Sparty was certainly weak on resources. Avec just doing a sort of double take there. Noticed that Sparty was lurking around and just passed overhead. You do not want to let go of that control. So that, that very uh, open play we saw from Avec before, I don't think he's going to use the same approach. He's going to be far more item focused on this occasion. And seemingly rail focused as Sparty accidentally goes back up the bounce pad. Avec trying to chase him down. Sparty needs to figure out a way how to escape. And he just fakes him out with the orb. And he's managed to survive somehow. That's such a good bait play to throw in. He completely fell for it. Hook, line, and sinker reeled in. But is this going to be him reeling in his own victory here? As he can't quite connect it with a railgun. They're still going a minute into the overtime now. Barely surviving on scrapes of health that they've been able to find with a stack. But that's the difference, oh. Maker 2. He's back in the game. He's got, and he's landed the rail. He's equalizing stacks. And now with that light armor, he's got the advantage. Avex got to be careful. He wants to play on the items again. This overtime has become... Really interesting, and Sparty is somehow giving himself a fighting chance now to go for a 2-0 versus Avec if he gets this next frag. It all comes down to this. There is so much pressure on his shoulders right now. Avec as well is going to be able to get it back up so we can pop it full vision across. He knows where he is. Prediction could be everything here, but he doesn't quite land the rail. And he is going to fall back, try and get himself into a better position, grab himself some more armor to play with as well. The bloom is there, but is this going to be ascending? Oh, I, li I like it from Avic. He didn't overcommit to the last fight, even though he had piercing sight. He's playing the smart control uh, control aspect of the game. He knows now that Sparty's not weak at all, and that uh, there's going to be a, a, a much larger sort of mini game being played between them. And he really doesn't. It's so important at the moment that you don't lose this because then you're totally broken for the third map because he had Sparty on the ropes mm. in sudden death and losing that, it's, it totally kills your momentum and, and, and kills, your, kills your mojo. It really will slow him down. It's just one of those effects that breaks your mental state very quickly, but breaking armor is going to be what he wants to do first. Spy takes the opening damage, tries to respond back. The rail's going to whiz by him. The rocket will connect at least, but they're still fairly close together in terms of the overall stack. However, the chase could be the difference maker. He is speeding after him. He's going to try and cavil as much distance Hi. as he can <laughs> and just crouch his way away. I just don't want to be involved. Why don't we? Let's just be friends. He's going to find oh. him in the rocket at the bottom of the bounce pad. It's going to allow Avic to close it out. That that's uh, an interesting way to close that one. It's not <laughs> how I expected it would go after all of that, but I mean, considering the position we're in, 
That's wild. Yeah, I mean, at that point, after Sparta got caught going up the bounce pad, and I don't think he expected to take another <laughs> rail shot, and it was like, I just want to hide, but there's nowhere to hide. Yeah. And he goes down to heavy at the wrong moment. I, I thought Avec was going to be, be able to drop that at the end. He made a great comeback, but uh, being able to be in a situation where Sparty's fought back so hard and you have to play against the fact that you've lost such a big opportunity and then being able to rebuild the opportunity, that's it's really so uh, strong presence of mind. It's so demoralizing because it, it really does just knock you for six and leave mm. you in a horrible position as well. It, it's yeah. not even the fact that then at that point you're getting too owed and your day is done. It's, as you said, right, you're still going into a third map. It's yeah. going to be so hard for you to mentally just take that as a best of one and not think about it because if you lose, you're conceding so many extra points mm. and you're also really putting yourself into a dangerous position in week two. Points start to matter pretty quickly with this format. Absolutely. But... Uh, we know that both players have at least secured themselves a couple. And uh, maybe this will go more to... I mean, I'm only trying to back up my own predictions here. But uh, maybe it will go towards it. I felt like whatever we just saw, it was really, a, really a high-level game. Yeah. There's lots of great plays. We saw uh, the, the patterns of each player individually, seeing their styles, and then how they have to adapt to each other in these really intense situations when you get to sudden death. Also, the baits that were coming out, by the way, were absolutely incredible. Mm. Like, some of those shots that we saw coming through where it was literally the mind games that were deciding everything, like this right here, that, was so, that escape so, so was sick. absolutely incredible. I didn't even see that he did the rocket jump afterwards to get away even faster. Yeah. Like, that was awesome. And Avex thinking he knows exactly what's going. He's kind of all because he's got no choice. He, he wants to go over to the heavy side because mm -hmm. that's the only way he can start slipping through, like, the, the downstairs passages. And uh, no, Sparty just somehow somehow did that I, I'm almost kind of gutted that he didn't win the map as well because mm -hmm. I think he made some heroic escapes but uh, Lightning didn't strike twice for him yeah he, he went down in the end but this does put us into a good position at least to yes. get my prediction right with the 2-1 because I, I feel like that's how it's going to go I mean it, the thing is it's if we're looking at it in terms of like the scrap we just had there mm -hmm. it was close that was literally a backyard brawl between for them sure. both there for was sure. teeth flying there was all sorts <laughs> And the thing is now, though, we get over to Molten Falls, where it's Death Knight versus mm -hmm. Slash. And uh, this is going to be difficult for uh, for Sparty, I think. But we've seen already, I believe it was Venga that um, managed to beat Toxis Slash mm -hmm. on Molten Falls. We know that Slash is an invulnerable at all on this map. I'm just excited to see Avic play it. And I'm curious how Sparty's going to overcome these challenges that that spot that... Um, slash tends to present. It's also if we get another affair like what we just had there with how close it was and mm. like the depthifying moments, it was such a cinematic game in terms of the escapes, the actual yes. fights we had. Very, very calculated. You could see literally down to a T in terms of the timing, which is it's mm. what you want, really. Yeah, precisely. And I, I think that's what we're after. Hopefully, it bodes well for the rest of the games today. We yeah. haven't just had like all our amazing games right in the first moment because that second map was just awesome. I wasn't even, wasn't sure what to expect in the series necessarily, but I, I don't think I was expecting this clenching is that no no that that definitely is uh that was a slobber knocker coming yeah, through in one yeah. map there and we've still got so many more crazy affairs tonight exactly. especially in the games we highlighted right yeah and uh, i mean we have we haven't had many sudden deaths i believe we had one very brief one mm -hmm. last week but that was that was a quality sudden death so i uh, hopefully if you're if you're fairly new to quake this is this is this is a kind of energy and adrenaline that you can really get in these close matches and uh, hopefully we're doing a, an okay job of demonstrating the type of mind games that there are at that level as well because that's that's honestly half the fun in mm -hmm. it in my opinion yeah it is I mean it's essentially being able to actually sort of fake out your opponent in complete sort of really the display that we saw like there with the getaway fake right outs, though. It's it, yeah. you, know, you know how they say like chess grandmasters can read something like 60 or so mm -hmm. moves ahead I feel like they're faking each other out 60 or so times ahead <laughs> it's kind of like you know the intro to, uh, to Willy Wonka where essentially he walks mm. out and he's got a walking stick, but he's fine, right? Well, you know, and then he throws away the walking stick and he falls over, yeah. but then he stands back up and he does a barrel roll and you're like, oh, what, does he need the walking <laughs> stick? Does he not need the walking stick? Was he hurt? Was he, is he all right? Why is he doing a barrel roll? It's one of those. Was it's that Sparty? That was that demonstration what Sparty did. <laughs> you know, just mind games. You're like, all right, you know, he needs a walking stick. He can't walk on no. his own. No, he's crazy. <laughs> but we're not going to need a walking stick for this one because we are sprinting into the third map. Let's get back into the action. Map three, the final fight. Let's see how this one goes. All right, so we got Sparty off the beginning of this. I'm sure we're going to get some slash action on stream a little later, but it's very curious to see how Sparty's going to approach this. He's going to try and zone out slash a little. Flames on the floor. Um, Avic doesn't want to get that damage over time, so he's going to be a little careful. And Sparty's now negotiating some weapons other than rail. 
and probably feeling quite good about himself. And a very good job as well to basically get that ability back up straight away. That's a pretty consistent pickup there with the hourglasses. And that's the one good thing about the ability, if you can land the flame strike at least remotely accurately, it's against a light champion who struggles to have those backup resources to survive damage like that. And also Sparty landing a good rail. He's going to get himself onto the Ooh. heavy as well. Weapon selection. Oh my god, a slightly sketchy and Avic hits the clutch shot. If Sparty switched to lightning gun instead of rail, he just simply didn't expect Avic to push in like that. It's madness as well, though, because it's the fact that rail was so close. Yeah. Literally, he basically gave him a haircut there, Zoot. That was the difference maker in him actually getting that kill. Instead, though, the restaurant straight back in. No slowing down, though. He won't let it phase him. Comes back into another fight. Wants to get the shot across as he's going to completely wreck face with the armor there and strip it off. But this one's looking to be a fairly effective game already. Sparta at least has managed to get some, some resources uh, off the respawn. But... Uh I, I honestly think that Sparty he made all the right decisions there. It was just the execution. And you know, if the rail hit, that would have been great, but he had a 100% chance to win the fight if he had a different weapon out, in my opinion. I think so. If we, if we would have seen the LG in play, right? Because yeah. we've seen how accurate his traces have actually been today as well. He, he looks pretty darn precision. He's looking crisp, so I wouldn't have been surprised. But hindsight is twenty twenty. Now let's see if his actual vision is going to be aiding him as he's trying to get those shots off with the rounds. Really favouring it right now. Trying to go for the precision play through the back door. Nice shot off with a flame, though, to try and ward him off. And you've got the, the, another possibility there where if Havoc had a different weapon out, he gets himself the kill. Uh, however, he maybe didn't... <laughs> Again, you, you have to anticipate those moments, and sometimes you just need to get some kind of damage out as soon as possible. Go on the offensive now. Chasing behind to try and see what he can spot. Sparty with the shots coming through. Finally going to go in for the lightning gun. Both of them being incredibly precise. He's only got 20 health left to play with. He's still tagging him. And Avic will back off. Basically gifting him a lifeline there to try and survive as he gets himself back up to 70. It's not perfect, but it's better than actually submitting and giving two frags to Avic this early on in the game. Sparty is just, please can I survive, please can I survive? Avec spots him there, but can't punish at all. If Avec lands the rail there, then you really feel in a horrible position. Taking resources, then you don't have them again for a while. I think Avec wants to attack a little bit, has to watch out for the flame strike. Good defensive play from Sparty. Avec still going to maintain the lead. Sparty has, is the one who has to fabricate that opportunity for himself. His lightning gun looks totally wild the way that he controls his mouse. It is crazy, isn't it? The playstyle that comes across. That's the difference with Quake as well on that individual level. Like the sheer variety you get in terms of yeah. sense that players have, it's just crazy how accurate some people are with the different levels of control. Well, we get to see some Avec action and uh, the kind of movement that comes with Slash. And look at that chase. There's the lightning gun to the rail. Beautiful stuff from Avec. Speedy and depthifying as he's going to start just battering his way through. He's not done yet either. The LG, is it going to be the difference maker? He gets him so low. Sparty barely getting away. He's able to pick up something at least to replenish himself, but he doesn't have much sustain here left to play with as we hit that four minute mark. This is looking pretty rough. Both of them just battling. This is interesting. I think does, Spart does Alec know that Heavy was or wasn't taken? He needs to go and have a look and see what's the general image there. Sparty dropping down, he takes it. Avic won't be bothered by that because he means he can do some good damage to him. Moves in with the lightning gun and he decides he's just going to tank that flame damage and secures himself a 3-0. This is now getting into a tricky position for Sparty because he's at risk of getting farmed. Oh, okay. When you land rockets like that, you, you know, I take back everything I said. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> that's the difference maker, right? If you can actually hit those and get yourself out of position. It does give him one frag to play with, but he still needs two more if he wants to equalize this. Is he going to be able to turn the table, or is he going to be smashed straight back through it? Zavank repositioning. I can confirm as well that this probably won't be. I can confirm it probably, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Won't be a 31-1 like it was versus Garfield. <laughs> so this is where it happened before. Well, the flame strike comes in. He does get the nice shot off with a rocket. Gets him low, but it's just not enough. He hasn't been able to smite him down yet. And there's a great amount of time between the two major items. Sparty's going to find the... Ooh. Oh, whoa, he misses wow. the shot. He was so low, and he just runs out of lightning gun ammunition at the wrong moment. That was almost a fifth for Avec. And Sparty somehow got himself back down to zero. Okay, I can confirm that it, it still might not be 31-1. <laughs> 
It's because Party, I think, put, threw himself out of the map or killed himself I think he rockets a couple of yeah, times. To try and stop himself a couple of times there, which is actually quite smart going for the denial. Well, Sparty re-engages, but again, going over that rail, he switches to a better weapon on this occasion, but the opportunity had already gone then. 5-0. See, the worrying factor is as well, as much as actually like the area of effect denial from Sparty has been pretty pixel perfect coming through with the DK, he's just not actually getting that much benefit from it because Avic Stack's been so high this whole time, he's had pretty much control of the map to freely get himself back up to full, that he can happily face tank that damage and then just carry on fighting. However, this is the first time we've really seen a bit of a flip in terms of who is the most healthy. So the problem that Avic, sorry, that Sparty's going to have now, it, it's kind of like the problem that Avic had versus base. Avic's got a highly mobile champion, mm -hmm. and uh, Sparty, despite having stack and ability to do good damage, it's it's difficult to chase. But I believe it's going to be a lot harder for Avic to hold on to the frag lead if control is so difficult for him. Just because one rail and it can mess up everything. One rocket to the feet, your movement is totally destroyed, and you can close in on that gap. So Avic is just trying to be hyper aware now, listen for the slightest of sound cues, and then rush away as fast as possible. Coming up to the seven minute mark here, as he's just going to be waiting, playing the patient game, trying to draw in the fight towards him. And it looks like that could be paying off as the rotation comes around, although the contact definitely goes in favor of Sparty. He fires out the first rocket, but here's that speed benefit that comes into play for Avic. Dashes himself out of there. Obviously, really, he doesn't have that much of a reason to fight unless it's a completely beneficial one for him, Zoot, so we can only add to that ridiculous lead he has. Avec doesn't really need to go for this item. It's such a dangerous place to be around here. The flames are going to take him down. Ooh. Sparty does find a kill. I was I was gonna comment on how Avex playing very smart, but he he didn't need to go to major items at all. He could play listening out for sounds and do what base did to him quite comfortably. This could be another kill because his timing is totally off. All right, this could actually start to change things here, potentially. I mean, yes. he's not out of the game yet. You're on 7 minutes 30. If he carries on playing as risky like this now and actually getting a little bit too overconfident, overzealous, he could quickly find himself being knocked off his high horse. Absolutely. Avec, I, I think he just needs to he needs to slow it down. He needs to stop going to major items. I firmly believe a champion of that mobility, you can play the running game a little more safely, but he's run right into him. Fortunately for him, Spot, he's got Ooh. the wrong weapons up, but he might still ex execute on this. That is a shocker he's even got away at this point, Zoo. I'm actually surprised he was able to hold on there and barely clutch through. He is burning down an awful lot of time, though, between these frags, at least, and that is probably the most beneficial factor that Avic can actually have to work with. Straight back in, though. You can see he's now on the hunt. Sparty realizes it's do or die. You don't have that long left. It has to be soon. He's getting very tired of uh, waiting for the item, so he's just decided to take matters Ooh. into his own <laughs> hands. That was something right there. What a, that was uh, sick. I think it worked out better than he was expecting. Yeah, that was really beautiful to actually open this one up as he now wants a little bit more. Trying to look oh, so oh. succulent. And the rail is just going to be ruthless. Uh, this has gotten... This has become a really close game. Avic's in a lot of trouble at the moment because he's struggling to keep his health and armor kind of at a safe level. And he keeps running into Sparty, or Sparty keeps running into him with his uh, his uh, proactive plays. Spot on the rail. They can't actually land a tag straight to the LG as he wants to hunt towards him. That's the follow-up. He gets him low, and he's hungry to try and get in there. He oh. wants the fifth kill, but it's not going to come through. Six to floor. As this is not looking great now. There's a minute only left. This is rough. I think Sparty got a little bit impatient just then. He's going to find him with the nail oh. gun. Rockets are hurting so much, and they're going to land. Looks like Avic is getting back to safety. I, I, I really think that Sparty, it was a brave move, Rocket jumping up, yeah. but Avic sensed it and had, ooh, and had just picked up the light armor then. But do we have a final twist in this tale? Two frags in 30 seconds. He basically have to have a time turn at the play with to get himself into that spot. It's not going to work out too well with the initial reposition. He's burning down an awful lot of time as he has 20 seconds now. Grabs the armor, straight back around. He is chasing. He spots the trail at least to give him an inkling of where he's going. I'm not sure if he spotted out the foot there on the pass. Yeah, he saw the trail and was like, okay, now I know which way the trail was going from how it was burning, but it looks like Avex managed to kill the clock. Yeah. He did it. Oh. It was troublesome, but Avex has managed to win the map. Wow. Dude, th th there was a solid 30 seconds there where it came out of nowhere. Like, yeah. Literally out of the dark, back into actually giving us another affair that looked like it was going to be so reminiscent of map two, where it was like, all right, 
we're actually going to have a ridiculous game in our hand. It's going to be super close. And then it was just that slight turn on the over aggression, right? Like yeah. he had it at a solid like seven percent, and then just went, "No, what? Like let's let's give it full yeah. nine out of ten. Let me just run in." And it didn't work. But. Yeah, I, I think Spotty realized if I just go for items, I'm not going to make it happen. I've yeah. got to play it away from them when they spawn because Alex is going to Spotty's very well known for his timing as well and how good his control is. So he had to do something that was totally unlike himself to catch Avec off guard. And it so nearly worked. Worked. I've, I've really got to you know, tip my hat to, uh, to Sparty because I, I think he showed a great game today. He showed a level much higher than last week, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. Um, but however, still um, popped up the finish. I'm still not sure how I feel, honestly, about the DK pick as well going into that last map because mm. it's kind of one of those where it feels like it's a bit hit and miss. And, uh, you know, I, I guess you never miss. He was quite accurate with it. He hit it quite a few times. However, it's just the fact that Havoc stack was always so high, it never really gave him that much of an area effect denial or of a, a dot that really helped him out. Yeah. Although when it did work, it, it was pretty show-stopping. It did look really beautiful. So that one's definitely going in the montage. <laughs> I, I think actually all things considered, I probably expe I expect it to be a bit more disastrous with DK, just mm -hmm. exactly as we're talking about. He's maybe not necessarily as strong a champion, but I think Sparty gave a really good account for what the champion yeah. can do. And you, know, you lose it in a very close game against the Slash, I think it was still a, a, an awesome performance. Oh yeah, it's a contrast to Styles as well. Like with both of the champs we actually saw there, it's very different mm -hmm. in terms of what we actually expected to see from that. So for it to even get as far as it did and look like potentially it was teetering on a knife's edge between this is going to go 5-5 five, five, and then give us an overtime to what it did end up with, I'd say both of them put up a very fair fight. And, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, Avink just come through looking very strong. I think fired up off the back of map one. He he really had a, a desire in his heart to try and get those extra points. I feel a little bit smug now. My, my, my half prediction came through. But you see how I kind of like bought it with like 3-0 and 2-1. Mm -hmm. I kind of gave myself two options. I, you know, smart play there. Hedge your bets. <laughs> That's what you do. You, you set it up with a, you know, because, it's like a sandwich. It's the yeah. zoom sandwich of softness. Yeah, because you know, normally my predictions go horribly wrong, but somehow, somehow I eat through. That means I won't get a single more, another prediction correct uh, for the rest of the day. Mm. So I'll enjoy, uh, I'll enjoy your predictions. Yeah, we will do. We'll be back with more action though here, of course, with the Quake Champions. If you enjoyed that, stay tuned. There is a whole lot more to come after the break.